Do you believe in ghosts? According to a recent Gallup poll, there are over 45 million Americans who do believe. Ever since the dawn of mankind, people have reported encounters with things unknown, things that go bump in the night. In a moment, you will embark on such an encounter. You're going to see authentic videotape of a true haunting, not a reenactment. And during the course of this program, you will meet some fascinating people who claim to have come face to face with ghosts. Whatever we're dealing with, it possessed the ability to kill. <sighs> Are you okay, buddy? Oh, Shit. God. And I remember feeling these eyes looking at me. It was as if somebody was right behind me, just looking right at me. The balls of light seem to have a purpose and name. <laughs> oh my God, Barry, oh my God. What happened to her? All we can tell you is what we've seen and experienced and recorded. I'm so scared and I don't even know why. questions the human mind cannot answer. Out of reach, past all we can see, hear and touch, beyond all we understand, lies the extraordinary. Extraordinary! Get down! Get down! Get down. The extraordinary is the apparent possession of this suburban Californian home something around my neck. Ghostly images photographed and videotaped. Images of the San Pedro ghost that have excited the scientific community. I guess what's particularly unique about this case is that the phenomena had a distinct belligerent malevolent nature to it in the sense that it almost seemed bent on hurting people. What happened? I told you, get down, get, get down! There was a moment, momentary space in there where everything went black. Jeff Wecraft was physically attacked in this attic on September 4th, 1989 by an invisible force that actually pulled him up onto a nail protruding from a rafter beam and actually tried to strangle him to death. Jackie Hernandez claims a ghost haunted her for three years. What is human blood plasma doing flowing out of someone's cupboard? And says she got a picture to prove her poltergeist tried to strangle a man in her attic. I was terrified it was a nightmare. The ghost in the attic. This is hard copy for Monday, March 15th. Every time I've seen him, he's always been cross-legged. He's got a grayish, he looks like he's a corpse. It looks like a corpse. And he's got a grayish uh, tone to him, and he's wearing a red flannel shirt, and he's, his shirt is tucked in, his pants are high waters, and they're like um, the old gasoline, gas attendant's pants. <laughs> the bizarre and mysterious world of the paranormal. Now, American Journal goes in search of the real-life X-Files and uncovers heart-stopping tales of unexplained terrors. The TV would turn on without being plugged in. Something hits me from behind, and it was a, a Pepsi from the refrigerator. Dr. Barry Taff, parapsychologist, 
has investigated well over 2,500 cases of poltergeist phenomena. It was he and former associate Kelly Gaynor who researched a classic 1974 case made famous in a movie known as The Entity. Barry Conrad, TV cameraman, has shot over 5,000 news and feature stories for television. An Emmy award-winning photojournalist, Conrad has worked for both the ABC and NBC affiliated TV stations in Ohio and Colorado. Throughout the 70s, Jeff Wheatcraft was an elementary school teacher in Omaha, Nebraska. In 1980, he moved to New York City to pursue photography. We started seeing these little comets of light at moving at very, very rapid rates of speed through the frame. Later on during our investigation, we found many more of these lights, which led us to believe that this was some kind of unknown form of energy. The phenomena it's displaying, besides the psychokinetic manifestations of objects moving, it's displaying visual materializations in the sense of um, corpuscular masses of light. We recorded a sort of peapod looking light. It looked like an object with three little cotton balls in it, and it actually traveled throughout the frame and it disappeared for a frame, actually blinked out for a frame, and one object actually entered her head. Barry didn't show me this film footage right away. He took him a while before I finally got to see it because they were afraid of what my reaction to it would be, which was th that of fear. It freaked me out to think that this thing was inside of me or that these lights were going inside of me. It's, it was bad enough having them around me but it was it was a very weird feeling you know when i saw that film and it still is every time i look at it today on the other side ghosts exist only in your imagination he was there but i could not touch him and that's what scared me to death you know they cannot control you the car was just like out of control i couldn't get it to stop and i hit a wall you know they cannot harm you all of a sudden i feel, feel this thing around my neck and it's got me hanging, hanging, and it's pulling on my leg. Unfriendly Ghosts, today. Walls that run with blood, midnight cries of terror. Hurry, hurry, please, hurry, please. I don't know how long I can stay here. It's all part of the Calamityville horror. <laughs> to my first guest. She said that she absolutely did not believe in ghosts, but all that changed four years ago after she started living with a ghost. Will you please welcome Jackie Hernandez? How nice to have you on. I don't know. Look at what's on the bed. Come on, you guys. Let's go. Please, let's go. Please, let's go. Please, what happened to her? Oh, my God. It freaked me out because it came so close to my kids. And it was almost as if it was saying to me, hey, I can do what I want to. Don't tell me to, not to mess with your kids, because if I want to, I will. What is that? What the fuck is it doing to my kids now? Let's get these guys out of here, Barry. You all right? I'm so scared, and I don't even know why. Do you feel something? Yeah. And the place was real cold. It was so cold in that trailer that we had to light a fire. Right away, things started happening. The table started shaking. Uh, it started answering questions so fast that you had to write down the letters. And you, I, we didn't know what it was saying until after all the letters were written down and we could put together the words that the letters formed. This thing actually spelled perfectly, correctly, special words, everything was perfect. During the Ouija board session, the entity actually answered questions asked by the group. The researchers were startled when the entity told them that he had been murdered, held underwater in San Pedro Bay in 1930. And when asked how many ghosts reside among the living, it spelled out, phantoms fill the skies around you. This night was incredible. 
It was terrifying. This disembodied head came right at me. These experts believe in ghosts. When things start flying around you, this is real psychokinetic activity. But others say they're fake. A rocking chair that moves when no one's near it is a function of stepping on a plank. Our jury gets in the spirit. I don't believe these people at all. If I came out and said, oh, yeah, I saw something in my room There's last night. You people probably call me a kook. Do ghosts really exist? Judge for yourself. Joining me is a woman who claims to still be living with a ghost that she first met in 1989. Please welcome Jackie Hernandez. And also joining us are two real live Ghostbusters that Jackie called in to document the haunting and who ended up being attacked by the ghost. Please welcome Barry Conrad and Jeff Wheatcraft. It was a ball of light that was um, hovering above the floor in the bedroom. And I was programmed by Barry very early on to get pictures of anything like this happening. And I, I enjoyed getting pictures. I mean, I wasn't frightened by it at the, uh, when, when I got the pictures. I was excited to get pictures that no one else would get and to prove that I was seeing what I was seeing get it on film. So I took the camera, and it was just a regular Instamatic 35 millimeter, and I started taking pictures with and without the flash in different parts of the room and trying to get different angles. And the light was the same as it had been before. It was a bright white light that would separate and become two, and then it would separate again, and it would go, uh, go back together, and it was a bright, glowing light. In my 20 years' experience in darkroom work, I have never seen these kind of negatives and these kind of photographs before. They're highly unusual. When this case began in the summer of 1989, no one could have predicted its longevity. Poltergeist activity is usually short-lived. Although today, the phenomena has greatly diminished, Jackie Hernandez believes that whatever was following her has not completely gone away. Were spirits of the dead responsible for the haunting of Jackie Hernandez or some other freak of nature? Strange colored mists, blood plasma, balls of light, and an attempt at hanging, all part of this unknown encounter. Are these not grounds for believing that something beyond this world lurks out there, waiting for us to discover its darkest secrets?